When it was quite dark, the masters of the house came home. There were seven little dwarfs who dug and searched in the mountains for minerals. First they lit seven little lamps, and as soon as the room was full of light, they saw that someone had been there, for everything did not stand in the order in which they had left it. Then said the first, Who has been sitting in my little chair? The second exclaimed, Who has been eating from my little plate? The third cried, Someone has taken part of my bread. Uh, who has been eating my vegetables? said the fourth. Then said the fifth, Someone has used my fork. The sixth cried, And who has been cutting with my knife? And someone has been drinking out of my cup, said the seventh. Then the eldest looked at his bed and seeing that it looked tumbled, cried out that someone had been upon it. The others came running forward and found all their beds in the same condition. But when the seventh approached his bed and saw Snow White lying there fast asleep, he called the others who came quickly and holding their lights over their head, cried out in wonder as they beheld the sleeping child. Oh, what a beautiful little child they said to each other and were so delighted that they would not awaken her but left her to sleep as long as she liked in the little bed while its owner slept with one of his companions and so the night passed away in the morning when snow white awoke and saw all the dwarfs she was terribly frightened but they spoke kindly to her till she lost all fear and they asked her her name I am called Snow White, she replied. But how came you to our house? asked one. Then she related to them all that had happened. How her stepmother had sent her into the wood with the hunter, who had spared her life, and that after wandering about for a whole day, she had found their little house. The dwarfs talked a little while together, and then one said, Do you think you could be our little housekeeper? to make the beds, cook the dinner, and wash and sew and knit for us and keep everything neat and clean and tidy and orderly. If you can, then you shall stay here with us and nobody shall hurt you. Oh yes, I will try, said Snow White. So they let her stay and she was a clever little thing. She managed very well and kept the house quite clean and in order. And while they were gone to the mountains to find gold, she got their supper ready, and they were very happy together. But every morning when they left her, the kind little dwarfs warned Snow White to be careful. While the maiden was alone, they knew she was in danger, and told her not to show herself, for her stepmother would soon find out where she was, and said, Whatever you do, let nobody into the house while we are gone. After the Wicked Queen had proved, as she thought, that Snow White was dead, she felt quite satisfied there was no one in the world now likely to become so beautiful as herself. So she stepped up to the mirror and asked, Mirror, mirror, on the wall, who is the most beautiful of all? To her vexation, the mirror replied, Fair Queen, at home there is none like thee, but over the mountains is Snow White free with seven little dwarfs who are strange to see, a thousand times fairer than thou is she. The queen was furious when she heard this, for she knew the mirror was truthful, and that the hunter must have deceived her, and that Snow White still lived. So, she sat and pondered over these facts, thinking what would be best to do, for as long as she was not the most beautiful woman in the land, her jealousy gave her no peace. After a time, she decided what to do. First, she painted her face and whitened her hair. Then she dressed herself in old women's clothes and was so disguised that no one could have recognised her. Watching an opportunity, she left the castle and took her way to the wood near the mountains where the seven little dwarfs lived. 
When she reached the door, she knocked and cried, Beautiful goods to sell! Beautiful goods to sell! Snow White, when she heard it, peeped through the window and said, Good day, old lady. What have you in your basket for me to buy? Everything that is pretty, she replied. Laces and pearls and earrings and bracelets of every colour. And she held up her basket, which was lined with glittering silk. I can let this respectable old woman in, thought Snow White. She will not harm me. So she unbolted the door and told her to come in. Oh, how delighted Snow White was with the pretty things. She bought several trinkets and a beautiful silk lace for her stays. But she did not see the evil eye of the old woman who was watching her. Presently she said, Child, come here and I will show you how to lace your stays properly. Snow White had no suspicion, so she placed herself before the old woman that she might lace her stays. But no sooner was the lace in the holes than she began to lace so fast and pull so tight that Snow White could not breathe and presently fell down at her feet as if dead. Now you are beautiful indeed said the old woman, and fancying she heard footsteps, she rushed away as quickly as she could.